Okay, this is the ninth and final revision video for C1. So almost finished. Okay, it's on the Earth's crust. We're going to look at the surface of the Earth, the Earth structure and the gases in the Earth's atmosphere. So first of all, you need to know the layers within the Earth. So you've got the core in the centre, and which is a solid iron core, surrounded by the mantle, which is more liquid, and then on fine on the top is a solid crust. Okay, surrounding all of that is our atmosphere. So just be aware that is also a label. Sometimes you need to add the crust and the very upper part of the mantle. Then is separated into what we call tectonic plates. And you've probably heard of these in geography, for example. And you need to be aware that we have convection currents. Those convection currents move the tectonic plates. Okay, so over time we know that those plates have moved. Okay, and the reason being these tectonic plate, these t uh, convection currents work is because that core heats that mantle. These particles close to the core get really hot and they move further apart, become lead stents and rise. When they come to the surface, they cool and they sink back down. And that repeats itself over and over again. And that movement within the magma, okay, within that mantle moves that surface, those tectonic plates, okay? So the heat released from radioactive decay inside that core cause convection currents, which make the tectonic plates move, okay? And movements which are sudden in those tectonic plates can be earthquakes or volcanic eruptions at the boundaries of the plate, okay? So that's important to notice as well that they tend to be on those boundaries. So that's in terms of the surface of the earth and the, and the structure. So you need to know about the gases within the earth. So sometimes you see a pie chart like this, you have to label the different areas. About 80% of our air is actually nitrogen, okay? Which, and then people tend to get confused in nitrogen and oxygen. So 80%, the majority is nitrogen. About 20% is oxygen, okay? And then you have a very, very small percentage, so 0 point, you know, 0 0.01, very, very small amounts of carbon dioxide and water, okay? And some of them may be noble gases, but very, very small amounts. So if we look back right to the beginning of the Earth and what the atmosphere we think was like, and there are many theories surrounding the Earth's atmosphere and about the um, about how the atmosphere formed, but also how life then started to form. So you've got the Earth's early atmosphere, we think, would have had intense volcanic activity that released gases okay, and water vapour into the atmosphere. And then over time, as the Earth started to cool, that water started to fall as rain and form our oceans. Okay, So that's the first important bit to note. There are loads of theories about how life formed billions of years ago. And you may get a question on that. More than likely, you'll get given the information you need to answer that question. But there is one theory you do to well, particularly if you're doing the higher tier, which is what's represented by the H here. This is called the Milli-Yuri experiment. Basically what they did is they put together the compounds they believed were in the beginning of the air, so water, ammonia, methane and hydrogen. They heated it up to vaporise that water. They then gave it a shock of electrical energy, so a bit of electricity in there. And what we found is it did form amino acids. Okay, those amino acids are the building blocks of life. They go on to form proteins, which are the building blocks of us. So the miller experiment goes some way to prove that with the elements and the compounds we believe were on the early Earth's atmosphere or were present with heat and electrical energy, we could have generated the amino acids needed for life on Earth. It was later then, as evolution began, that plants and algae produced the oxygen we then needed in the atmosphere, which we see up here, okay, that was then produced by photosynthesis in the plants. So we know we needed that for um, larger life and multicellular life to start evolving in, at, in the animal kingdom. Okay, and the other two parts linked to that is you need to be aware of all the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is there, there is a lot of, okay, and we do need to be aware of that, is although it's a very small percentage when you compare it to nitrogen and oxygen, but the minute it's locked in those fossil fuels, in those carbonates, in the rocks, okay, and that carbon within the carbon dioxide, it's also locked within the oceans, okay, the ocean is a reservoir of carbon dioxide, which can affect marine life, so be aware of that, it's a slight negative, that, but, but the more we burn those fossil fuels, okay, or decompose those carbonates, we're releasing that carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere, so this small little percentage starts to increase, which is going to impact global warming, so just be aware that within the atmosphere we have this fine balance of carbon dioxide and 
you know, if we start to shift and get a bigger percentage there by releasing this stored carbon dioxide, that can be an issue for global warming. And finally, for the higher tier only, just be aware that the air we have, okay, the percentage of those different components of the air, we can separate it out using fractional distillation because each part of that air, okay, each section or each fraction, if you like, has a different boiling point. So if we heat it up, okay, or cool it down even with air, because it's already a gas, we can start to get them separating out by fractional distillation and we can then use that. For example, we might want to use the oxygen for breathing aid, okay, in hospitals or in ambulances, etc. Okay, so we've looked at the structure of the earth, tectonic plates, convection currents, and how they have, so how using the convection currents theory to understand how tectonic plates move, the percentage of the gases in the atmosphere and what we think it was in early life to sort of current day and how we use that, those different components within the air.